Hi, I'm Rebecca Reinking and today I'm going to teach you how to hopefully elicit a clear S or Z sound using a piece of dental floss. Now I heard this tip from the wonderful Pam Marshala and I thought I'd try it on myself and I've tried it with a student and it can really help when you don't know where your tongue is supposed to sit in your mouth for S. A lot of the times I tell students, we've got to get our mouth ready for starting the S sound. So it might mean smiling a little bit and elevating the sides of our lips so that it's not like a shh. So we might get that ready, but it's also, what is your tongue supposed to be doing in your mouth? And this is a great place to start. So all you're gonna need is a piece of dental floss. I would start longer um, just because it's easier um, to insert it in the child's mouth. And I have tied a series of knots that you can see here. I think there was about six or seven, um, but you can kind of judge. Now, the reason why we've got a series of knots like this is because you're going to insert the floss in between the front teeth and you want the knots on the inside. Now, I personally find it easy to have a little bit of length at the end, probably like that much. Um, if that's a bit annoying for the student, um, you can try again with a piece of floss and cut the string closer to the knots, um, but the knots is the real focus here. So I'm gonna insert this in my mouth and then I'll go on to the next step of how you use the floss to try to facilitate um, a clear S sound. There we go. I'm gonna give the pull test um, like this, just so it's kind of in there. Okay, now, because there is something in between my teeth, my tongue naturally wants to explore it. It wants to know what is this foreign thing inside? And that is really good because we want the child to know that up here, where the back of the, um, the floss is, because as you can see, if I come up close, it's like up the top there. Um, our tongue is supposed to be sitting close, you know, up there for this S sound. So we're going to tell the children to explore it and to play around with it with the tip of their tongue. And then their tongue is going to sit just slightly back from the, um, the knots. And the reason why is because we don't want them to push their tongue up against the knots, which means pushing their tongue up against the back teeth because the S will sound distorted. It will sound like this. That doesn't sound right. We really want a really soft air stream. So if your tongue is just sitting back or just behind the knots or like the tip is just a little bit touching, the idea is that the air will flow um, just around the knots and hopefully get that nice narrow air stream like this. Now, what I've had to do for myself and every child is different is my tongue did touch where the knot is and I moved it back just a tiny bit so that it kind of kept that same position, but it was just back a little bit. Otherwise, it would sound a bit funny for me. So try this with your child and see how it goes. See if it can help just with that initial placement. You will likely have to give additional cues. It's not just as simple as inserting FOSS and expecting that you're gonna get a clear S sound straight away. You will likely have to say, you know, lift up the tongue a little bit or make the sound softer and provide a lot more instruction to shape and to turn it into a clear S. Um, if you don't know what other things you should say, um, this tip here, this FOSS tip and um, different verbal instructions, they are available in the S and Z handbook um, that we have. Um, this feels really funny talking like this in a video with this FOSS hanging out of my mouth but I'm just gonna go for it. Um, the other thing I want you to know is that this will not work for every single child. So this might be something that really clicks and it helps one child with tongue placement for a clearer S sound. It might be a big flop for another child. So I don't want you to think that this is the only way and this is the only trick or magic cue out there. What works for one child will not work for another. So put it in your toolbox. If it doesn't work, um, know that we've got over a hundred cues in our S and Z handbook to try to support SLPs. Uh, because at the end of the day, you never know what you say, do or show to a child that will be successful and that will click for them. We just need options. And hopefully this little floss trick is something that will support at least one of your students in the future. 
Thanks for watching and make sure that you subscribe for some more uh, S therapy tips and just tips on eliciting speech sounds in the future. Hopefully um, it won't be as awkward as me talking with a piece of floss in my mouth.